welcome to the world of building design. My name is Batank, your host. This is Revit MEP uh, Sprinkler System Design Tutorial number 12. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how we can add some um, equipment and some um, sprinkler system assemblies into our um, sprinkler system model that we have built so far. So. I, I just wanted to make a clarification at the beginning of this tutorial that um, the purpose of this tutorial is not to show you what system to select or how to engineer a sprinkler system and is basically for the modeling uh, for the modeling um, you know demonstration uh, for the design actually uh, for the design of the sprinkler system you have to understand the, the different kind of uh, codes and standards uh, the way we uh, practice in Canada and in North America there is a National Fire Protection Act and many other standard and local um, local authorities and um, other codes and standard that we need to obey with different type of designs uh, and that's why uh, the, for this short trainings, I, I do not want to focus on the uh, code compliances and uh, uh, what are the selection for this design is is basically a, a Revit, um, you know, demonstration on how to use the Revit as a modeling tool. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to show you uh, some of the uh, the companies which are the leaders in the in the. Uh, fire protection and uh, in the sprinkler system design and how they created uh, interactive tools that can be used um, as Revit tools and uh, can be used as a very easy reference for uh, selecting and building um, Revit assemblies and Revit families to be used directly in the design. Obviously, if uh, somebody does that as a designer, they need to specify this equipment um, and uh, create the specification or use the specification, uh, engineering specification to be used uh, for, for the construction of this kind of system. So we had built uh, some um, piping. We entered some piping into the building for the demonstration purpose. We elevated it and we uh, ran it through the ceiling space. We had a number of a sprinkler head and we were showing it um, with, uh, along with some sidewall sprinkler heads. So we, we need to now go into uh, one of these manufacturers that I wanted to show you how they use um, this as an interactive tool. Um, so I'm coming to this website. Um, let me just go to the collaborative tool. Revit tool. So basically, the company called Viking, which is a known company in the in the area of the fire protection and sprinkler system, they have developed some uh, interactive Revit tools that can be used for this purpose. Um, basically, you need to go into into their website, and they have uh, some good tools that can be downloaded and is added as a is added as a, a plugin to the Revit and uh, it can be used to select various families or Revit families this is just an example on how manufacturer use Revit for for this purpose so if you go and find that a specific uh, specific tool I'm just going to search here Revit tool. So they have a uh, new Revit tools in here. Actually, I need to find appropriate site for this. Let me just go back and 
find the actual interactive tools. Yes. Okay. So this is the site digital.vikingcorp.com slash tools dash Revit. So basically, this tools is that where you sign up and download, uh, you get a um, activation code in your email, and then once you activate that in your Revit, you get a new add-on or plugin called Viking. As you can see, this is a new uh, activated tools that I got uh, as an addition to our normal Revit tool. So once you go on your Viking tab, you see a whole host of uh, new system um, and selection uh, scenarios are opened up to you for your uh, sprinkler system design. Again, I'm not promoting for this company or uh, I'm not promoting you to go ahead use their product or anything like that. This is just for showing you how we can or contractor do the professional design of the sprinkler systems uh, with the with the actual uh, product that are going to be assembled on site. So the library of Revit gives you a limited number of families that you can use in your modeling. But if you need to design for a specific type of a sprinkler system design, or you're looking for a specific type of equipment or systems or based on the occupancy or whole host of different parameters, you can use the actual uh, manufacturer who are leaders in this area and proposing different kind of equipment. Obviously, you have option to search for all other alternatives uh, for the same applications in the industry. So, while I'm here, I can create an assembly for, for the uh, sprinkler uh, I want to build a riser assembly here, so I'm going to go to valve configuration. While I'm in the valve configuration, what happens is that this, uh, you know, selections are connected to Viking um, Revit library directly, and you can basically filter out or customize the exact family that you're looking for, and build your assembly or design based on. Uh, your type of system. So in our case, I'm going to go to VET system. I'm going to go to model J-1 alarm valve. I'm going to go to start configuration. You know what happens is that as soon as we start <coughs> the, um, the assembly or we filtering out, we see that there's an interactive selection comes up here where the select valve um, and load comes into play. This means that you can load your family right into your Revit based on the type of design. So you can see here the assembly type. This is an assembly type. I'm going to go flange and flange. Basically, it's a flange on both sides of the valve. I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to select my size which is 3 inch in this case I go to next I go to galvanized I'm gonna go vertical because I want to build a vertical um, riser I'm gonna go next ordering option I don't care that much I'm gonna go loose stream and then domestic trim no go next and then now all adds on into our assembly comes up. You see that you can see that this assembly very visibly and you, as you built on on it, you would see what is built on. I want to add a 4 inch check valve and you see that 4 inch check valve is added to it right interactively. And then I want to add a say um, PS-10 alarm pressure switch. I'm going to add and you see the pressure switch is added. You will see the pressure. Um, and then I'm going to add a C-1 retard chamber. Again, this is not something that you want to do necessarily in your design. This is just for demonstration and how this interactive tool from this company helps you to build and design your riser assembly. right? And then 
there are other options that you can select from and add to your you know assembly and remember as I do this the filter here is also updated basically this is where you want to download your family so this is good now I go to next and it gives you the whole bunch of information on the type of configuration summary parts and technical data you can get all of this in here and at the same time you can download this on a zip file and also you can download it from here because we have filtered that valve style that we built so I'm going to go to this 3 inch flange by flange model J-1 vertical trim with retard I'm going to go in here I'm going to double click on it and once I double click it's right downloaded into my Revit model I don't think this is saved anywhere in your computer or in your database. Basically, you can just use it on your, um, you know, model. Um, and as you can see, I have it here, VKV VET valve model. So basically, I have downloaded it right here, and I'm going to bring that into my system. Remember that this was a this was a vertical assembly, so I'm going to go to a 3D model, right? And here is where I want to mount this assembly. So basically, I want to find the center line. Remember that you have to have this dashed line as your center line uh, flushed with the center of your valve. I'm going to select the point, just mount it there skip a couple of times and then let me go to a realistic detail and then I make it realistic I'm gonna hit on this valve assembly one more time and then first of all I wanna rotate this so I'm gonna press on this button I'm gonna rotate that and also I wanna see how this valve is looking like so I'm gonna go to um, basically I want to rotate this okay so, so if you go to the 3D model already we are in here I'm gonna go to this corner see if there's any change happens to the orientation of the valve So that's the valve we have added already. So I'm going to select this assembly one more time and then use the other rotational tool, which was um, on the side. I'm going to go backward a few times because it looks like the it looks like that there has been some changes made to, to this assembly. I'm going to select again. I'm going to go upward. I'm going to pick on this. Okay. And then I'm going to select the whole thing and then nudge it down. If I pick the whole assembly and pull it down, what happens? So like the whole assembly, pull it down, making sure that you, okay, as you can see, you can't separate this from each other. If you pick, there is something happens to the whole assembly. I don't want to make a change to this at the moment. Uh, basically, I just wanted to show you how to mount this. Let's select the whole thing one more time and then see if anything like that happens if I use... Yes, that's basically it. It mixes up because the whole thing is not one file. Okay, so basically that's what I added. I can go ahead and add some other devices say like a detection
and control. Basically, any of this, um, any of this tab that you select, it takes you to this company's website, where you can select from any of those um, any of those panels or equipment. And as you can see, it takes it directly from the website, and you. Okay, let's go back to level one. And when I go to level one, go back here, detection and control. I just wanted to look at it from the floor plan perspective. Detection, control. And then I'm going to give it an elevation of, say, uh, 1600 and mount it against this wall somewhere. Okay. okay. I'm going to go to this 3D view, create a camera, put the camera on this corner, just create a viewpoint to this side, and then have a look at what we built here. Let me just change the, that to like a detail view. Let's open this up for you to see. And then I'm going to go realistic. Just going to go up a little bit. What happens here? Because this is our this is our um, you know realistic view right now. So we have been creating some assembly. This is we take directly from a company's website that is manufacturer of this assembly for the Sprinter Riser and other product. Uh, we didn't rely on the uh, Revit um, database itself. And basically that's what I wanted to show you and how uh, you know we can add various equipment to our sprinkler system design. We will explore these options in the future tutorial um, uh, in a more detail. Thanks very much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you like this kind of videos and tutorial, please uh, press on notification button to see them as soon as they are posted. Thank you.